quite a country, this America of ours. This broad, fertile, endlessly busy land in which we play and work and live our lives from day to day. And yet, most of us take our good fortune pretty much for granted. Naturally, we recognize our great strength, our tremendous resources, and our basic freedoms. But usually, we're too busy to wonder much about where they came from. To ask, why is America the industrial giant she is? Why are we so fortunate? Why do we have the highest standard of living in the world? Why is it all here? Where did it come from? Well, America didn't just happen. America was built. The building materials have been waiting since time began. There were immense primeval forests of oak and maple, pine and redwood. There were mountains of iron and of limestone to yield steel and concrete. There were deposits of gold, lead, copper, zinc, all the minerals of earth, wealth beyond reckoning. Nor could America have come into being without the fertility of her boundless prairies the age-old deep loam of a farmland. Power also was abundant in many forms. The energy of the river was there to be harnessed. The energy of coal was there for the digging. Oil for the drilling. Yes, all these resources were ready for the building of America. And the builders? They crossed the great ocean to a new land. These hardy men and dedicated women, because they wanted to live in their own way in this new land. No matter what its hardships or dangers, they could stand on their own feet as men and women, worship God as they chose, and build a way of life by their own efforts, talents, and abilities. These strong, far-sighted people believed in themselves. They wanted something better, and they wanted it bad enough to take the chances and go after it. When tragedy struck, as often it did in those days, death too was a seed sown. A seed for a future harvest of independence and liberty. For more than a hundred years, this harvest spread along the Atlantic seaboard. Colony after colony took root and flourished. In their mutual search for freedom, these colonies joined together. And as a final act of independence, declared themselves a new nation. As the nation continued to grow and expand, the people carried with them the same spirit of freedom. It was the guiding principle of their daily lives. They fought and died for it, and naturally they took it into their business enterprises. The free enterprise system grew right along with the people because it was simply the way they wanted to live. Yes, they created free enterprise without even thinking about it. And it worked pretty well. Industries began to appear. The iron horse replaced the covered wagon. The day of mass production had arrived. Machines could duplicate products of uniform size and quality. So the nation grew. The use the people made of their natural resources under free enterprise produced the country with the highest standard of living the world has ever known. And it all came right from the people. From the ambition, initiative, and courage of the individual American who is willing to take a chance on something new and better. Here is one of the thousands upon thousands of successful businesses that are the backbone and sinews of our nation. Here is a company that isn't as huge as some of the giants, but its assets run into many millions of dollars, as does its gross yearly volume of business. It is known and respected around the world. It contributes tremendously to the production of oil and gas, one of the great strengths of America. It is well-equipped and well-managed. It maintains modern laboratory facilities for testing, development, and fundamental research. And it gives a good living to approximately 7,000 people. 
It contributes millions in taxes each year. And starting from scratch, it is just a little over 30 years old. The Halliburton story is typical of the stories of many other companies, and in the fullest sense, it is the true story of America. Now, it all began, as many such stories are apt to do, with a boy. About 1900, young Earl Halliburton lived with his parents on their farm near Henning, Tennessee. There is a good deal of hard work that can be done on a small farm by a small boy. Bringing in wood, chopping weeds, cultivating. These and other chores were his responsibility. And in their performance, he was forced to develop the self-reliance and steadfastness that stood by him in the years to come. He faithfully attended school the year round. The death of his father gave him the entire responsibility of the farm and the provision for the family. He knew now that he would never be able to go to college and they would have to make his own way. But he had the American heritage of courage and initiative to draw. He left home to take a job in order to augment the family income. By the time he was 18, he had worked up to a job as clerk in the commissary department of a railroad construction company. And in the next few years, he held a series of jobs that gave him a broad range of experience. He worked as engineer of the camp's small locomotive and as operator of a steam crane. Later, he became a salesman. He shipped before the mast on a tramp freighter and at 18, joined the Navy. There, with the same drive towards something better, he studied engineering with particular attention to hydraulics. He also operated the Navy's first motor barge. At the end of his enlistment, he was 23 and had qualified for the rank of professional engineer. In 1915, he went to work for the Perkins Orwell Cementi Company in California. Later, with his new knowledge, he went to the mid-continent with the idea of explaining the principles of cementing to oil men there and starting his own company. The first office of the Earl P. Halliburton Oil Well Cementing Company in Wilson, Oklahoma was somewhat limited in size. And the staff had certain other duties to perform, not entirely connected with oil well cementing. However, the entire efforts of management, research, engineering, sales promotion and production were devoted to providing the growing oil industry with the best possible oil well cementing service. Actual operations finally got underway with a borrowed wagon, an old pump, a salvaged tank, a suitable length of clothesline, and some wooden plugs. Naturally, as with any new organization, it was necessary from time to time to provide additional revenue from other sources. It was even necessary during one period to liquefy certain fixed assets to provide working capital for equipment and payroll. But the basic purpose never wavered. A good man could mix 500 sacks a day by hand, but it was slow, hard work, and the mix was not too uniform. Was there a better way to mix cement? Now he thought there might be. A jet of water sucked the cement from the hopper and made a thorough, speedy mix. This fundamental invention was the forerunner of the mixers used today. There were times when clothesline simply was not ideal for the purpose of measurement. Halliburton developed the measuring device which is now a standard throughout the industry. By 1921, the rolling equipment had increased to three wagons and three trucks. The men who pioneered the Mejia, Texas boom in 1922 made such a widespread use of cementing 
that the Halliburton fleet of cement and trucks had grown to 17. As the oil well cementing idea began to take hold in the Southwest, the Halliburton Oil Well Cementing Company moved to Duncan, Oklahoma, and was incorporated July 1, 1924. But more important than the incorporation of the company was this statement of policy. Gentlemen, we intend to build up and maintain a complete coordinated organization. We will cover all phases of oil well cementing service equipment, and accessories. We will maintain an adequate and sustained program of research, rendering efficient oil well cementing service throughout the United States. We shall give a uniform quality of service, regardless of location. We shall get there somehow safely. In short, we intend to maintain leadership in our chosen field. And it was maintained. The little red wagon has changed through the years, but the big red wagons with twin triplex pumps that are called on to handle volumes up to 40 sacks a minute and pressures up to 12,000 pounds per square inch still operate on the same fundamental engineering principles, just as the company itself still operates with the same honesty, hard work, attention to duty, and willingness to try for something new and better. These are the sound homespun ideals that have enabled this business under the American system of free enterprise to grow in only 30 years from one man's idea to an organization so far-reaching and complex that it is difficult to picture. The home offices of this worldwide organization are still at Duncan, Oklahoma. Here, top-level decisions are made and policies are established for the entire company. Earl P. Halliburton is still active as chairman of the board, helping to guide the continuing growth of this progressive organization. The executives who direct and control the operations of the company have, without exception, come up through the ranks. They are practical men with years of experience in every type of operation in which Halliburton is active. Actual business procedures and control are, of course, the most modern and efficient available. The latest electronic brain is used, both in accounting procedures and to solve complex research calculations from the laboratories. Also, at the home plant, our shops which build Halliburton tools and equipment. The powerful pumps which are the heart of the cementing units are designed and built with knowledge gained from the widest cementing and treating experience in the industry. In the completely equipped metal forming shops, component parts of truck bodies, tanks and other equipment are fabricated. And in the truck assembly shops, the big red wagons themselves are put together. They are built from the chassis up to make sure that they are the finest, most modern in the field. Also at Duncan are the shops which produce the multitude of special tools and equipment used in the field. The equipment may be as delicate as a watch, as tricky as high explosives, or it may simply require machinery and manufacturing of the finest type to the closest tolerances. But whatever is to be done, cement casting, metal blasting, heat treating, electroplating, painting, welding, or any other necessary operation will be carried out with the highest skill and the finest obtainable materials to support the manufacturing operations of the home office. Stockpiles of necessary raw materials are maintained including a lumber yard. The finished products are warehoused, ready on a moment's notice to be shipped to the far-flung service camps as needed. The Halliburton promise of a never-ending program of energetic research is kept by this modern laboratory. It is the modern embodiment of the pioneering spirit, the constant reaching out for a new and better way. It is this home office activity that is the source of company progress and stimulation through new ideas. Research is faith in the future. 
a future in which the outstanding young science graduates recruited by Halliburton will have a successful and creative part. Research must be founded on fact, and in this library is gathered a wealth of information pertaining to petroleum science and industry. In addition to source and reference material, research must have physical facilities, and the new laboratories provide the finest, both in modern working space and in the latest and finest apparatus for studies in chemistry, physics, metallurgy, and all the allied sciences. Naturally, the results of research must be given practical application to be of value to the industry. For example, the consistometer, which provided the first positive means for evaluating cement slurry pumping time, was developed in Halliburton Laboratories and has now won wide acceptance throughout the industry. The new center at Duncan also houses the engineering department so that the two functions may work closely together. In this way, engineering not only develops and improves new tools and equipment for the field, but also cooperates with research to make entirely new concepts workable. From a scientific experiment, a new fact emerges. This fact, translated into a tool or a process by the engineer, is fashioned into practical form by the mechanic and then tested. It may be first tested in the high pressure chamber, which provides the means for studies in pressures up to 30,000 pounds per square inch or it may be run directly in the test well. In this way, anything new may be thoroughly tested before it is tried in the field. This careful and complete testing provides knowledge for further development of the tool if necessary. Another phase of Halliburton research is carried on at Houston, Texas. The Electrical Well Services Laboratory conducts a research program to originate and improve logging devices to aid in the search for oil and gas. For example, it was here that Halliburton's unique frequency modulation system was developed. And it is here that research is carried on with all manner of electrical and radioactive tools. Here too, there is another test well in which any type of log can be run to try out new tools and theories under practical working conditions before taking them into the field. An interpretive section can call on the services of geologists, mathematicians, and petrophysicists to aid in the understanding of data obtained from both research and commercial tools. There is a continuous educational program which transfers knowledge gained in the laboratory and from field experience to operating and customer personnel. The worldwide field organization controlled from the home office maintains service camps throughout the United States and in Canada, Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Sumatra, Germany, Italy, Mexico, Sicily, and Australia. In short, wherever free men are producing oil. A typical service camp comprises offices, warehouses, car and truck sheds, repair shops, field laboratories, bulk cement and acid plants. Moreover, Halliburton service is always flexible and ready to move into a new field immediately when the need arises. Each camp is a complete organization in itself, with its own management and facilities particularly suited to the area in which it operates. And it is responsible for the maintenance of these facilities in top condition and for the complete satisfaction of the customers it serves. The widespread operations of the individual camps are coordinated in a large measure through shortwave radio. In fact, Halliburton now operates the largest privately owned radio controlled automotive fleet in the world. Because all wells are often drilled far from any highway, 
This rolling stock must be extremely rugged and maintained in perfect condition if it is to always fulfill the slogan, we'll get there somehow safely. And it always does. Because oil is found in the colorful bayou country and in the open sea, Halliburton developed marine equipment. A fleet of vessels is ready for service. The twin diesel Halliburton 206 can carry 2,500 sacks of cement, plus the necessary additives and gel needed for marine cementing. These vessels also become the home for the crew on the job, providing comfortable living accommodations. The fleet is continually being added to. Here is the Halliburton 207 with air-conditioned living quarters and the most modern cement and equipment. In addition to the automotive and marine fleets, the company operates a fleet of airplanes to carry supervising personnel to various jobs that may call for a speedy consultation and to fly customers into Duncan for work at the home office. While the company concerned itself primarily with cementing at first, it now provides a wide variety of services to the oil industry. Logging trucks are complete mobile units, which furnish records as to the kind of formation drilled through and whether oil or gas production is available and the types of fluid. They are able to make electric logs and develop and print records in the field as soon as they are obtained. Many types of logs are made. Guard electrodes overcome distortion of conventional logs. Contact logs locate permeable zones. Temperature surveys have many uses. Caliper logs give a profile of the hole. All are run with the same truck and discussed on the job with a customer by a Halliburton specialist. Dip logs to determine the dip and strike of formations and radioactive logs measuring both natural and induced gamma radiation obtained with a separate instrument truck on the well. Auxiliary services such as sidewall coring and gun perforating are carried on by the same truck and the same logging line to ensure accurate results. Today, formation testing services are available in all oil producing areas. Millions of dollars have been saved to well operators because the formation was tested before the expensive casing was purchased and set. Hydro spring testers obtain samples of the fluid from the desired formation for reservoir interpretation and productivity of the well. The Burdon tube records the bottom hole, hydrostatic and flow pressures with great accuracy to interpret reservoir data, furnishing a permanent record. Halliburton's application of numerous production improvement techniques has actually resulted in the recovery of added millions of barrels of oil. Among these methods for creating new producing channels is formation fracturing, pioneered by Halliburton. In this process, a fracture is created by hydraulic action. The fracture is then propped open by the graded sand introduced with the fracturing fluid. These methods have been widely accepted throughout the industry with highly profitable results. Increased production is obtained from limestone and dolomitic formations by acidizing and fracturing to enlarge existing and create new flow channels. Used before cementing, MCA will clean the formation and a better bond will result. This mud cleanout agent penetrates into the pay zone to remove restrictions caused by emulsion, water and mug blocks. Dump baler service provides for the placement of special materials, such as calcium, a gypsum cement for shot tamping, hydromite, a plastic cement for remedial work in producing wells, and chemicals for aluminum pipe removal. Of course, Halliburton's first work was cementing, and today the company is far and away the largest cementer of all wells in the world. Truly, the sun never sets on the Halliburton cementers. 
This widespread use is the result of the natural growth of a valuable process properly applied. Cementing places cement in desired parts of the well, seals off water or excess gas, protects casings, aids in preventing migration of fluids from one formation to another, and performs many other important jobs. No well is really complete until it has been properly cemented. Bulk cementing was introduced by Halliburton in 1940. It provides accurate blending, introduces special additives as needed, ensures freshness and economy, and produces tailor-made blends of cement for special conditions. Further, the time and money saved by elimination of sacks has helped to win wide acceptance in the oil industry. Bulk cementing and blending has also led to POSMIX, a very important Halliburton development in which a pozzolanic material is carefully blended with cement. This blend is less expensive, has excellent pumpability, high bonding strength, and lasts longer under higher temperatures and pressures. DOC, or diesel oil cement, is a development used in squeeze cementing. This slurry of cement and diesel oil with a surfactant is designed to shut off unwanted water and will not set up unless such water is contacted in the well. Casing floating and guiding equipment with super sealed valves is engineered and manufactured to give extraordinary service. New designs are never offered until fully tested and proved to be of benefit to the industry. Roto wall cleaners improve primary cementing by removing mud cake from the well bore, thereby reducing precautionary or remedial squeeze jobs. Casing centralizers contribute greatly to a good cementing job by holding the casing away from the wall of the well at critical points. The DV multiple stage cementer makes it possible to place several stages of cement outside the same string of casing at selected points. The hydraulic retrievable squeeze cementer can perform a series of jobs at desired points in a well. These packers perform under the highest pressures and most difficult operating conditions with economy and safety. DM and DC packers are efficient tools for squeezing cement. They are also used as bridge plugs to prevent passage of fluid from either direction in the casing. For more than a quarter of a century, Halliburton has produced highly accurate well measuring devices, such as the extra heavy duty power driven and the standard, which may be driven by automobile power. We have seen something of the Halliburton Oil Well Cementing Company. We have seen how it operates, some of the services it performs, and some of the equipment, tools, and products it manufactures for its own use and for the oil industry. But what we have seen does not explain the great success of the company any more than a catalog of America's cities, farms, and industries will explain the enormous success of America. In a broad sense, the company came into existence and grew because of our American heritage, which is simply the character, enterprise, and courage of the individual American. Of course, one man does not build a company any more than one man builds a nation. The building is done by people the people who follow the way of life of the nation, the people who are a part of the company. There never has been a work stoppage or a strike at Halliburton. The company-employee relationship is based on justice and fair play. And the employees themselves follow the American way of life within their company. Each employee has the freedom of opportunity to use his abilities and initiative for his own advancement. That employees do use this opportunity is shown by the fact that a large percentage of the executives first began working for Halliburton as drivers of cement and trucks. Well, that's how this company happens to be here. That's how America happens to be where she is today. Our strength is in our people, the breed of people who want to get ahead and will, no matter what the obstacle. Every American must know that it is still possible to start, as Earl Halliburton did, with an idea, some wooden plugs, and a piece of clothesline, and actually create, in 30 years, a $100 million business. We must never take away their incentive and their right to do so. 
we must never forget that as they forge ahead, they are not only building their own lives and futures, they are building America.